Anthony, I don't even know where to start because this is just like out of control here, beautiful. So we're going to start with this. How long have you been on Federal Hill now? The restaurant itself's been there since last year. Tomorrow, October 5th, is our first year anniversary. One year old. So thank you, everyone, for making us uh, very successful. All right, all right. We're going to start with all this amazing food before we even get to the to the Federal Hill feast because this just looks unbelievable in this wine. I'm already drooling over the wine and the food. So Anthony bought the space that was formerly uh, Euro, Euro Bistro Euro. that had been up on Federal Hill for a long time, and it's a great location right at the tip of the hill on the opposite end near the church. So he's got a great location, and I've had the privilege of knowing Anthony over many years, actually, to do with festivals and feasts, right? Yep, he came to uh, Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. I've been in Las Vegas. 2000. With him. Yeah, so I've been, we've known each other quite a long time yep. and been involved in many different feasts around the country and even in Providence. So tell us about your menu, because these dishes look uh, unbelievable. So well, we have Chef gonna... Domingo. He's an awesome chef from Rhode Island. He makes uh, our famous uh, bone and veal uh, parmesan. Look at this. We got his homemade... Um, cannoli. He makes his homemade cream, and then his famous uh, linguine and clams, and then we top it off with a nice bottle that. of wine of uh, Zach and Nimbus. Zach and Nimbus. So it's all fresh every day. He pounds out the veal. He goes and purchases it, so that, and that's our motto, that we want everything fresh daily. So he told me that I had to try this. So you I'm have to try it. So Everyone sure, has to come to Anthony's. I'm making sure I'm trying have it. some uh, bone-in veal. Oh my god. I didn't have lunch, so this is absolutely amazing. So we brought this all for you and your cats. Thank you so Staff. much, Anthony. This is very nice of you. Yeah. So, Anthony not only has the restaurant, and we'll segue to the to the feast a little bit, is he has the stand that he's had for several years. Oh, since 2002, I used to be in front of Vincent's clothing store. That's right. And Going back a long time. From there, that was, you know, that was a long time ago. We started to um, you you just do all food, food, sausage and peppers. I made a linguine and clams, mussels. Yep. This year I'm adding um, a funnel cake. A funnel cake this year? Funnel cake. First yeah. time, a lot of people. Sure. Salud. Thank Chin you. Thank you. Come and enjoy the feast of uh, Columbus Day. So he's got a stand that it's it's like a, almost like a triple stand, like three, three different spaces. Yeah, right? I do 30 feet. We do the tiramisu, cannolis, sausage. Uh, sometimes we do the chicken palm, veal mm -hmm. palm, sandwiches, and um, Philly cheesesteaks. Mm -hmm. So you have that? And Italian sausage and peppers is a number one seller. <laughs> it's, it's always the number one seller. But the chicken parm and the veal parm, i got to tell you, especially after tasting this, getting a veal parm sandwich is nothing like it. Walking on a crisp fall day, walking up and down Federal Hill to enjoy that. So, And the atmosphere of all the restaurants, like uh, Chris was saying, right. that everyone comes out, they sell all their foods, and, and all the people from the neighborhoods come out and they get to see each other that they haven't seen in many years. So, Anthony, you've been involved in, in feasts, Italian feasts at different festivals all around the country. I'm fourth generation. My great-grandfather came. We're all from Federal Hill on Penn and Knight Street. Um, so I run the 38th annual, we're going into the 39th annual, San Gennaro Feast in Las Vegas. I've done it here in Providence in 95, 94. Then um, I run the St. Mary's Feast with all the vendors. In Cranston. In Cranston, right. Cranston. Yep. So we've been doing that with Hank for... A long time. 20, almost 15 years or 20 years. A long time. So his experience in dealing with these traditions, if you will, and these events where people are coming out, he knows the business of the festival. So one of the things that's important to highlight for both the Columbus Festival and the Situate Art Festival is that these are economic engines. They are things that we all go out to enjoy. It's a, a normal part of our lives. It's traditions. It's family. It's friends. But these festivals generate jobs. They generate these people being in business. And it becomes a marketing tool for the businesses up there. Anthony will be promoting his restaurant all weekend long, similar to what Chris Tarrow just mentioned. And it's educating people that haven't oh, seen the restaurant in right? Keep, keeping the Italian culture alive with the music. I have uh, Ron Giorgio, he performs every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday now. So he sings all Sinatra, D. Martin songs. Um, I have a strolling entertainer, the guitarist, that performs still on the weekends. So I like keeping everyone entertained at the restaurant, and especially at my festivals where tens of thousands of Fago has come to. So tell us about your stand setup because you can't miss Anthony's stand. It's a little bit unique the way it's set up. So I keep the tradition. I paint it green, white, and red. I put up uh, Italian flags and American flags. And I put the food in front of you. This was so we, good. we cook it all the time in, in the front. So like they used to do in Italy. Well, they still do, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So you can't miss the stand. Right? Yep. So one of them is in front of Walgreens next to Beve, and the other one's near Shallow's Bakery. Uh, across from Umberto's. So, the types of foods, the, the variety of foods that are up there are amazing. And when we talk about the Situate Art Festival, there's some very cool things to learn about that one, too. So, food is always an integral part of any festival, anything that's going on. 
the restaurant itself, I kind of want to give, I mean, with your one year anniversary, which is fantastic, and congratulations, you've got a, a unique space down there. It's not like he's the biggest restaurant on the hill to talk about. Give us a little visual of the setup of the restaurant and the style of the menu overall. Yep, it's a nice Italian boutique uh, restaurant. Um, we have tables outside on the patio, mm -hmm. and inside we can fit about 50 people. Um, we have free parking in our parking lot and on the street on that side of Feather Hill on Isles Avenue. So the patio, you keep that open pretty much as long as you can, right? Yeah, weather permitting, right. which I, I would like to enclose it for the future. Really? Yeah, I want to nice. put like a glass dome and maybe enclose it to have more tables year round. So you've got a nice bar that's set up at yep. there. And, and that bar's been there for over 90 years. Right, in that location, right? Yeah. That's crazy. It's been that many things that have been up there on the hill that have stayed the same for it. In 90 years, that bar's been like yeah. that. And, uh, you know, Kenny, who had it prior to me, Euro Bistro, did a nice job designing it. Yeah, it's a beautiful space. And he was and there for like 16 years. Right, yeah. right. So it's one of the things that you first see when you walk into Euro Bistro. Now, you said your daughter's running the restaurant. Yep, she's uh, 20 years old, been running for a, a whole year. I'm usually out of town doing festivals. So she's doing a fantastic job and all the staff. 20 years old, she's got that great responsibility. Yep, 19 she started. Wow, that's awesome. So Congratulations like, to her. So they're busy, Nappy and Chef Domingo and all the other staff that's been helping me. They've been there since day one. So I got a good uh, clientele that, that follows us as well. Absolutely. So menu-wise, and Chef Domingo is not a stranger to the culinary institutions in Rhode Island. He's been around for a long time. I remember him back when he was at Capriccio. Capriccio. Yeah, when he was at Capriccio. Yeah. So think about the style of food that's there and the tradition that he's carried over. Dishes like this, you guys are using traditional Italian ingredients. Oh yeah, all, right. all, all fresh. He goes out every day buying, and he, he puts on the brazzini. He's got fresh tiramisu, like I said, the cannoli. Everything is, he does is all fresh and homemade. It's absolutely amazing. So Anthony has a fun tradition that follows the uh, <laughs> how to make everyone Italian enjoy the festival. So you got to share this tradition with me that you do. How to make you make everybody an honorary Italian when they come back? Oh, definitely. So we definitely parsley up the food, and everyone that comes to the feast is going to be Italian. So we want to invite you and invite you too as well. So you're Italian. This I was already Italian, but now I'm even more. Now I'm even more. more. Major more. <laughs> So you got to come and enjoy the Columbus Day Festival and all the goods that Federal has the offer. So, so come and enjoy it. Bring your family and friends. So if you go by the booth and you end up with some parsley on you, you know why. He baptized he's, he's, you. He's baptized <laughs> you and made you an honorary Italian. And it is a great tradition to come up there and do. Now, going and now that you've accomplished the first year, yep. okay, there's a lot of good things that are awaiting you to come up on Federal Hill. What are some of the things you think will happen over the next year that you're going in to kind of expand? I know you got a, a fall menu change coming up, right? Oh, the chef, he does uh, specials every single day. He always brings uh, his talent to, to the restaurant, and we're looking to open up a second restaurant as well. And I need a bigger location. So I'm looking, you're looking for to open a second restaurant. A second restaurant, and I'm looking to uh, maybe one up the hill that's vacant that we, be, we keep looking at. So you're looking to possibly go on a second location on Federal Hill? Yes. Maybe we go. Maybe on Federal Hill or another location, which we've been looking for. In Rhode Island or Providence? or It's a secret. Oh, come on. In Providence. you got to tell me. Is it Providence? I don't know yet. Oh. We're well, looking at a couple of different areas. All right. I'll going to keep prying him for answers over the weekend so I can try to get his better information. But so second restaurant coming in the we next year. We need it because we get so busy on the weekends we don't have the room. So I, I, need, I, need, I need to do a bigger, uh, bigger restaurant. See, this is great. So reinvesting back into Providence. Absolutely. He's had one year, and he's already looking at a second restaurant. Congratulations so, to you. So I want That's to thank fantastic. all the customers that come and my staff that get us successful. That's awesome. And so they love our food. Let's talk a little bit about going back to the festival for a little bit, the number of times that you've experienced this. Around the country, and I'm going to bring this up with the general a little bit, is that He's been involved, and he just mentioned that he has the San Gennaro Feast in Las Vegas. And I'm looking to go back to New Orleans and my uh, San Gennaro yeah, Feast Miami. Miami coming up, right? In February or March. So these festivals, like I said, are a vital part of the traditions that take place. So the art festival is no different than the Columbus Day Festival where it's a tradition, and the artists rely on this to showcase their wares, and the nonprofits rely on it to be a part of it and raise funds is that what happened this past week in Las Vegas at a music festival was absolutely a, a tragedy. But in no way should it cease to stop any of us from attending these great events around the country. And when I speak to my next guest, General Centracchio, we're going to be talking about the best parts of the Citroen Art Festival, but we're also talk a little bit about how it's you know safe for us to attend these things and to, to carry on our normal ways. So Anthony's been a big part of it. You've been at many of these festivals. Your experiences in Vegas is that this is something that's never that's happened before. Never happened. Yeah. That's insane what uh, that gentleman did. I got a gentleman. It's insane what he's, he's done. 
but we beef up our security all the time to keep it safe for everyone to come out and enjoy the uh, our events. So well, what, what he did, I can't even speak about it. It's just terrible, but horrifying. It's an encouragement to all of us to go back and enjoy our costumes oh, and our traditions and come out this weekend. So, Anthony, thank you very much for coming in with all this amazing food. Everybody back here is going to be loving yeah, life. Sure, and, sure, and, enjoy and, and a great warning that I'll be able to do. So, next year, you're going to have to come back and tell us about this new restaurant. Absolutely. All right, and you're going to give me some tips beforehand that I can kind of help you, you know, put the good word out there, right? You're going to help me. I'm going to help them. See, there yes. we go. So, we're going to look forward to the new restaurant. So, so, cheers to you. Keep that culture going, whatever events that you do.